Let's bring in Bob Cusack, editor in chief of The Hill. Bob, we know that President Trump addressed North Korea's aggression, the war in Syria, and he also slammed the Iran nuclear deal. Did we learn anything new about U.S. policy towards these countries? I think we did. I mean, there was, there has been some speculation that uh, President Trump would not get rid of the Iran deal that uh, President Obama. Uh, struck uh, in, in his last year in office. So uh, this was a clear indication that on this issue, he is going to be keeping his campaign promise. He's got to make that decision, uh, I, I believe, by next month, and that uh, his rhetoric against Iran shows that, that he's going to be ending that deal. I think the tone he took today was much tougher uh, w than his tone yesterday when he gave a short address. Um, and, and that, I think, surprised some people in the room yesterday was uh, was was more okay, you know, uh, the UN is doing well, but it can do better. It was kind of more measured, and, and this was definitely an America first type of speech. Definitely America first, but it's not uncommon. He has criticized the United Nations before in the past. Was there anything that surprised you, the fact that he took a tougher tone? I, I was surprised he, he used the, uh, the term rocket man in that kind of formal address. It clearly was on the teleprompter. Um, and that uh, you know his aide Stephen Miller apparently had a had a role in writing this, so that was that was surprising that he was using that type of rhetoric in a formal setting. Uh, but as you mentioned, this is something he this is consistent with what he said on the campaign trail and and in the early months of his presidency. I want to switch gears for a second. CBS News has confirmed that President Trump's former campaign manager Paul Manafort was wiretapped under a warrant over concerns that he was communicating with Russian operatives who wanted to influence the elections. We've seen a lot of smoke here on this investigation. Does this prove that there is fire and something substantive that could come from all this? Well, Rena, I mean, certainly the noose is tightening uh, around Manafort, and uh, they are really being aggressive with him. Uh, the report in the New York Times uh, highlighting that they, when they raided his house, Manafort was asleep. They picked his lock and, and said, threatened him that you're going to get indicted very soon. So they are leaning on Manafort very, very hard to give up information. Uh, and certainly he's going to need a large legal team because he is under the microscope right now. The fact, Bob, that they used a search warrant for what's really a white-collar crime situation, did it surprise you that they went to that extreme? And do you think they're trying to flip Manafort? I think they are. I think I think this is what they do. Uh, prosecutors and federal authorities, uh, they use intimidating tactics, and that's certainly what they did uh, when they raided his his home. So they think that they have the goods on him, and that he's going to have to sing and tell. Uh, federal authorities what what he knows and and possibly you know uh, point the finger at somebody else perhaps a bigger fish than Manafort so uh, certainly I think there there's there's more smoke here uh, and we but until we get the final conclusions and any indictments if there are any we just don't know how problematic Bob would you say the fact that he kept that Manafort kept in touch with Trump after the campaign how much of a problem will that be for him I think it depends on what they talked about. What were they talking about? Russia, uh, that kind of thing. I think that uh, it may look bad politically, but as far as him touching base with Manafort because he's known him a long time, that's not bad. But but the fact that you know what what do those transcripts of, of those of those phone calls? Uh, what do they look like? Uh, that's what that's what we all want to know. Lastly, Bob, I want to ask you: Republicans are pushing for another repeal and replace with Obamacare. Where are we now with the Graham-Cassidy bill? We, we're getting very close to passage here. This is very surprising, and I think over the last 48 hours, this bill has picked up a lot of momentum. We've been talking to senators, and, and we're hearing today that, that a lot of the on-the-fence senators are going to be yes. Remember, it only failed by one vote. So I think the key people to watch here, uh, Susan Collins, Mur uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski, and Senator McCain. They're going to need to at least get two of them because it looks like Rand Paul is going to be a no. I think they're awfully close to getting to that 50-51 passage. And, and we're hearing that the House would pass this type of bill. Remains to be seen. But long way to go. But there is suddenly, surprisingly, momentum uh, for this last-ditch effort. And you don't think it's going to be problematic for these Republican governors, uh, senators who took money for Medicaid? It seems like there would be great cuts to Medicaid in a lot of these states. Won't that be a problem for some of these folks? S certainly some of them, without a doubt. Uh, but the Arizona governor has, has embraced the bill. Uh, and that, and I think that helps get John McCain. John McCain is a friend of Lindsey Graham, who co-authored this bill. Republicans have wanted to, to block uh, fund Medicaid for a long time, so that's why they're going to vote for it. But I, without doubt, you're going to.
going to see governors come out against this. This is going to go down to the right. Remember, they must pass the final bill by September 30th under the budget rule. So this is the clock is ticking. The clock certainly is ticking. We know Vice President Pence is on the Hill today. Is the White House on board for this type of effort? Yes, uh, President Trump wants a win on this. Uh, he was very happy to strike a deal with Democrats on, on the fiscal deal. Recently got good headlines, as he noted, to, to Senator Schumer and, and Minority Leader uh, Pelosi. He wants to get a win, and he was embarrassed that he couldn't get health care done. He went after Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. So they are on board with this bill. They just want to build a sign, and they will sign it. All right, Bob Cusack, thanks for joining us, Bob. Thank you.